On this episode of our autonomous driving future, traffic. Or let me rephrase that, no traffic. Woohoo! Traffic. It's been a worsening reality of our modern society for decades. Cars clog the arteries of every city, large and small, day and night. Traffic has huge costs that we don't often think about. A Texas Transportation Institute report estimates that in the U.S., the average urban commuter wastes 42 hours a year stuck in traffic. That's over a week at work. That's 6.9 billion hours Americans lose every year. And it's only getting worse. In fact, it's gotten 20% worse since the census began tracking commute times in 1980. The thing is, I don't have to tell you how bad traffic is. We all experience it. And I'm not just talking about those of us that have to commute in traffic every day. Even if you want to make a trip to the store, or the movie theater, or to meet friends on the weekend, you usually hit traffic. Bumper to bumper traffic is the worst. It's so frustrating to barely move, all probably caused by a few cars braking for little reason half an hour ago and then cascading into a full-fledged traffic snarl that causes you to get home an hour late. I'm not just talking about the worst standstill traffic. How about just heavy congestion or even moderate congestion? This is still traffic because it slows the rate of speed down from optimal. And any time you can't travel at an optimal speed is, well, suboptimal. Okay, we get it. Traffic sucks. But you said this episode was about no traffic. How is that ever going to happen? Well, let's look at what causes traffic in the first place. There are four main causes of traffic. As we saw in our first episode, 30% of urban traffic is caused by looking for parking spaces. When you're looking for a parking space, you're driving around slowly, forcing everyone to go around you, gumming up the roads and slowing everyone down. The second cause of traffic is a high volume of vehicles. No matter how wide you make the road, the choke points are the off-ramps where traffic backs up onto the main highway. And that's why, as our Earth's population has steadily grown and more people drive cars, traffic has steadily gotten worse. The third cause of traffic is our lack of communication and slow human reaction times. Even when you have ideal highway conditions, if just one person taps on their brakes, it causes a cascading effect behind them that spreads and worsens because humans have slow reaction times and we can't predict what the car in front of us is doing. A similar thing happens at a stoplight. When the light turns green, only the first few cars get through the intersection because we human drivers can't all accelerate together. And finally, the fourth cause of traffic is accidents. Because we are human and humans make mistakes, we get into accidents. When we do, we block traffic. And even when our cars are pulled over to the side of the road, looky-loos slow down to see what's going on, causing the cascade effect we just talked about that can last for hours. Okay, so now we know what causes accidents, but how do autonomous driving cars solve these problems? Good question. As we learned in episode one, in our autonomous driving future, there will be no need to park. Cars will drop off passengers, and drive off to pick up their next passenger. No parking means 30% less urban traffic. In episode two, we learned that there will be far fewer cars in our autonomous driving future. Even a 20% reduction in cars can drastically improve traffic, but we're talking closer to a 90% reduction. Far fewer cars equals far less traffic. Autonomous cars will all communicate with one another. When one needs to slow down, all the surrounding cars will anticipate and take the most efficient route. No more cascading traffic effect. Autonomous cars will all move together like a school of fish or flock of birds. Perfect communication and instantaneous reaction times equals no traffic congestion. And when cars react and communicate perfectly, there will be virtually no accidents. And when there is the rare accident, other autonomously driven cars will not slow down to watch they will simply be programmed to safely avoid the scene. Virtually no accidents equals virtually no traffic. Put all of these solutions together and there will be no more traffic.
period. You're going to get where you're going much faster than you ever have before, much safer, and repeatedly, every time. No more missing dinner. No more missing your child's sporting event or school play. No more frustration. No more beeping. No more being cut off. No more mindless brake pedal, gas pedal, brake pedal. Hop in a car that pulls up on command. Pull out a book or an e-reader and enjoy. Recline and close your eyes and take a nap. Heck, take out your smartphone and text, whatever. You'll actually get the time back for yourself. Not only will the trip be much shorter, but you'll enjoy the trip. Or just look out the window and enjoy the view. Soon when cars drive autonomously, there'll be a profound change in our human psyche. No more road rage, no more stress. More time for relationships, more time for thought. Just like the Industrial Revolution in the late 19th century began changing how much time people had to pursue activities other than pure survival, having autonomous cars will bring about another shift in human evolution. Don't believe me? Well, think about this. When cell phones came along, they profoundly shifted how we communicate. No one back in the landline days of even the 80s and 90s could have imagined that one day soon we would be calling each other no matter where we stood on the planet texting, emailing, surfing the web, Snapchatting, Facebook, tweeting, Instagramming, buying stuff, ordering Ubers, booking airline flights? We humans just aren't that good at imagining what awaits us just around the corner. But some visionaries can see through the clutter. And though they are ridiculed during their lifetime, their vision shines through the fog of our collective ignorance. Now you know.